So now I'm just, the brachial artery sits a little bit medial to the bicep. So I'm going to come on um, just lateral or radial, and it slips me right to the bicep brachii. Okay, so this is your anterior window. And you can track this proximally. And you see the steep dive it takes from the antecubital fossa to the to the radial tuberosity. And so when you're you're hunting for if it's a tear and a retraction, it's kind of a variable between um Will the Lacertus be tacking it down and it's not retracted all the way up? Or sometimes it snaps up to the cubital fossa like a rubber band. And that's very much up to you to go figure out and find. So that's our anterior window. Okay, now let's go to the medial window. And we're going to compare and contrast the dynamic element to this one. Um, so like Ryan said, if you look in the textbooks, you're going to see the, the, you're gonna see the medial window patient position looks something like this. And I'm in agreement with Ryan that I think it's a little bit easier, and especially if they're symptomatic, I can get them here and kind of rest them a little bit. And the muscle group I'm using as the acoustic window to visualize it is the pronator teres, the medial window, aka the pronator window. So let me go a little more depth here. How, how are we looking on the ultrasound? Um, on the, it's on... looking good. Uh, some people are asking to zoom it in, but we got what we got. Yeah. Next time. Yep. But I'm zoomed into uh, Julius's uh, elbow. Julius, how are we doing over here? We hanging in there? Solid. All right. Julius had a long day today. I think he's ready to catch some Z's when we're done. Everybody give uh, give Julius a hand clap or a thumbs up for being here. Yeah, this guy works a lot, guys. He's very nice to, the, to, to donate his time here tonight with us. Oh man, you you're getting a lot of love over your list. Um, so let's let's freeze it up. And the type A perfectionist in me is sitting here trying to get the perfect picture. So, radio tuberosity. And as you can see, we're not getting quite the same area of footprint. Now I can mess around and, and probably get a little bit more from from uh, the footprint width, but this is the bicep brachii. Okay, and this is the radial tuberosity. So I'm going to unfreeze and then demonstrate to you all the dynamic element to this window, which is super crucial. So if you want to see if it's actually intact or not, okay, you see the little, you see the movements I'm making is just itty bitty movements. You're not cranking them all into, you know, super high range, okay? You're, you're, you're not going to be able to track the movements as well. So I'm just going to take these little movements, these baby movements. So you see the radial tuberosity is, I'm pronating, supinating the forearm. And you see that tendon gliding just nice and crisp. And so I'm tracking, tracking, tracking. And the brachial artery is kind of my guide here. That's a nice picture. Okay, so right underneath the brachial artery, you see those tendon fibers gliding, and I can track it right to the radial tuberosity. Okay, so now let's go. What are the other two windows? The other two windows are the lateral and the posterior window. Each has its own um, advantage, let's say. The lateral window, you're not going to get a nice clean tendon bone um, image, but what we do get is, um, again, it's a good dynamic window to test if you're if whether or not it's intact or how high grade is it is a full thickness full thickness or partial. This is a good window to help you confirm that. Um, in order to acquire it, okay, patient position matters. You see the patient position here belly on their lap, rested about 90 degrees on the elbow. So how we're going to find this, okay, I want you to start a little further distal on the forearm. You see how I'm short axis here? 
I mean, you see the bone right in the middle. That is the, uh, that's the radius. Okay. I'm going to move upwards, superior, proximal, and that's the supinator. Let me use my arrow. Short axis, radius. This is the supinator adjacent to it. And this is all brachioradialis up here. Okay, so now I'm going to move proximally, just ever so slightly. And boom. You see this bright structure come in on the bottom? That's our bicep brachii. Okay, you see, because of the shadowing of the radius, we're not able to get to the tuberosity aspect. But as I said, the purpose of this window is not necessarily to assess the tendon bone interface. It's to assess whether or not this tendon is intact or not. Okay, so, so again, I'm going to take his hand and just do a little pronation supination. And you see no paradoxical motion. That thing glides like a on a string. Okay, just how it should. So remember the method for that one again. Okay, start distally on the forearm. Find the radius. Slide proximally until you see this, this tendon coming in horizontally. Okay, and that's a that's a um, that's a fail safe way to get the right to get the right picture every time. Okay, so the medial and the lateral windows are really nice dynamic confirmations of the bicep brachii. And how intact is it? Um, the anterior window is probably your optimal view for tendon bone footprint. The medial is probably a close second. You can get some arguments on that, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, the posterior window is, this is the window, if you're a physician and you're doing orthobiologics, you're doing PRP injections, this is the window you're going to use to guide your needle to the distal bicep insertion. <laughs>